So in this video, I would like to introduce the oscilloscope and the function generator. So we'll start off here with the oscilloscope. I already have it turned on and it's not too difficult to understand what the oscilloscope is in spite of the fact that it has a lot of buttons on it. Basic functionality of the oscilloscope does only one thing. It graphs voltage versus time. So we have a little screen here and on the vertical axis it's plotting voltage and on the horizontal axis it's plotting time. The oscilloscope just plots from left to right and then once it reaches the right side of the screen it starts over and it just continues to plot over and over and over again and some of these buttons on the oscilloscope for example control how fast it's plotting and the ranges that's pretty much all the oscilloscope does now to demonstrate its functionality first I'm going to use the DC power supply I've got some voltage on it right now and when I hook it up to the oscilloscope I'm just going to turn the knob with my hand and we can see that as I turn the knob then we should see some sort of a change on the screen. So I'm going to hook black to black and red to red. It is worth pointing out that quite often the, uh, the oscilloscope black is, is grounded. So if you have a floating power supply, then sometimes hooking something up to the black into the oscilloscope will effectively connect it to the earth. So you have to be careful sometimes if, if you're not expecting that. I'm going to hook hook red to red and you see as I change the voltage with my hand then we're getting some change in the plot. I'm going to keep changing it and it actually is changing but you notice that sometimes the oscilloscope is not so quick to react as my hand but you know as I continue to change it okay I'll stop changing it it will actually show the correct signal right it's just sometimes slow to catch up with me a little bit that's normal for, for oscilloscopes. Alright so the point is that it's refreshing at a very slow rate I can change the rate of refresh with some of these controls on it. But before I do that, I'm going to use the function generator because the function generator gives us a much cleaner signal to work with than my hand moving back and forth with the voltage knob. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the DC power supply. And when I shut it off, we should see a drop in the oscilloscope because we're no longer providing a voltage. Now some of these knobs, for example, the vertical position knob, it just shifts the whole plot up and down. Uh, we've got also a horizontal scale knob that does the same thing. Let's turn on the function generator. Now the function generator in some sense uh, does the opposite of what the oscilloscope does. The oscilloscope is a graphing unit. The function generator is a supply unit. And it's something like a DC voltage source ex except that it provides a time varying signal. The buttons generally only give you a few options. All of the buttons up along the top row are related to the frequency of the signal and the buttons down here at the bottom are related to the shape of the signal. For example, this function generator can give me a square wave, a sawtooth wave, or a sine wave. So I'm going to hook the output of the function generator to the input of the oscilloscope. Now, it's now providing the signal and it's showing up in the oscilloscope, but it's, it's a very fast signal and it's a very slow refresh rate on the oscilloscope. As I change this vertical scale knob, I can kind of zoom in on my signal. And the signal is oscillating so quickly that it's kind of all banded together in the uh, oscilloscope. Now, oscilloscope is telling us to wait, and there it's refreshing. It's uh, giving us one second between each one of these divisions on the oscilloscope. So it's a very slow refresh rate. Now there's one very important button on the oscilloscope. It's called the auto set button. This is really handy because when you push this button, the oscilloscope has some intelligence in it and it can think about how fast your signal is changing and try to set the screen settings and the scale just nice. So let's hit the auto button and see what comes up here on the oscilloscope. There we go. There's our sine wave. The oscilloscope has properly aligned all the scales and positions. If I were to want to change it, I can do that. I can move it up and down with the scale knob. I can move it side to side with the horizontal scale. I can adjust the vertical scale with the scale knob. I can adjust the horizontal scale with this knob. I can adjust the channel. So the oscilloscope also has two channels, channel one and channel two. You'll notice that only channel one is illuminated at the moment. The oscilloscope has somehow detected that I only have a signal present on channel one. If I were to unplug it, 
Okay, we have nothing. And then I move it over to channel two. Of course, we still have nothing. But if I hit auto set, the oscilloscope might be able to tell that we have a signal on channel two, which it did. And that's nice. Of course, I could show both channel one and channel two at the same time. Channel one now has nothing displayed and it's just zero. Channel two is giving us a signal. Now, what's nice about the oscilloscope is that it can allow us to measure some properties of our signal. So if I go here to the measure menu and I hit this button, it gives me some various options and I can control what options are selected with these buttons. For example, if I hit this button that says voltage and then I scroll it down to peak to peak and I push in on the knob, then it's now showing me the peak to peak voltage of my channel and it's yellow, so that's channel one instead of channel two. Let me move this over to channel one so that we only have one showing and I'll hit auto set to bring it back. There we go. So the oscilloscope is now telling me that my peak to peak voltage on channel one is 460 millivolt. If I then adjust the amplitude on the function generator, then uh, that number is going to change, right? Let's go back to the measure menu and measure the frequency, which should be under the time menu. So there's period. I'm going to move it down to frequency, push in on the button, and we uh, have a frequency measurement 2.2 kilohertz, which is almost matching what the function generator is supposed to be giving us. So as I change the frequency on the frequency or the function generator, the signal generator, it's changing here as well. So 3.0 kilohertz, 3.0 zero kilohertz. If I change to a sawtooth wave, we can see what that would look like on the oscilloscope. If I change it to a square wave, we can see what that would look like as well. The function generator is very easy to understand because it only really has, has two kinds of buttons on it, shape and frequency. But it is worth pointing out that sometimes these function generators have two output ports. One of them, it's labeled here TTL CMOS. Like that means it's going to give us a signal that's only a square wave. So even if I pick sine wave, a square wave is going to come out here at the same frequency as the standard output. So it's important not to get these confused. The only time that you might you know, want to use this is if you need to control a microprocessor or something and you want to have, you want to be able to measure the frequency. It would not normally be the case that you would want to take this output. If I do an auto set here, we can probably see what the peak is. And uh, to do that, I'll need to go to the measure, voltage. Let's go peak to peak. All right, it's giving me 5.24 5 volts. So nominally, I suppose it's supposed to be 5. If I change the amplitude here, it's, uh, it's not changing at all on the oscilloscope, right? If I change the frequency, of course, then it's going to change. But changing the shape, square wave, sawtooth wave, or sine wave, the TTL CMOS output is always going to look like a square wave, and the amplitude is always going to be around 5 volts. So don't let that confuse you, right? Because you might think that something's wrong with the function generator, where in fact uh, you could just have it plugged into the wrong port. So let's move it over here to the output port. and do an auto set. Let's see what else we can do on the oscilloscope. There's one uh, menu here that can be rather important and that's called the trigger row. So over here on the right, the trigger function is related to the synchronization of the refresh of the oscilloscope. So right now it's obviously refreshing very, very quickly. And down here, it's telling us that the time between horizontal divisions on this screen is only 100 microseconds. That means that it's refreshing at least several thousand times per second. So if it refreshes and the next drawing doesn't exactly overlap the previous drawing, then you'll end up with a big mess on the screen. Let me show you by adjusting the trigger level. So if I get it triggered incorrectly, Ah, then the refreshes aren't lined up with one another, and then it's hard to do any measurements, right? What we really want is for 
the next cycle of a refresh to try to redraw the signal. So the oscilloscope has something called the trigger menu. It's showing up as a horizontal line and what you want is for that line to cross your signal and that indicates to the intelligent circuitry in the oscilloscope that it should try to align that portion of the signal. All right, so you can adjust that with one of these knobs. I think that pretty much wraps up most of the basic functionality of the oscilloscope. Now it has a lot of other functions here with the measure menu, you can measure period, you can uh, put a cursor on it and roll it around and find out where any particular point is on the signal. But a lot of this extra functionality is easier to explore with hands-on operation. In any case, I hope the video has given you a useful introduction to both of these pieces of equipment. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you might be interested in following our playlist and learning more about the fundamentals of electrical circuits.